Well, good morning, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. As I said before, my name is Jason Stevenson, and I am the Director of Secondary English Language Arts at the State Department of Education. Thank you for being here today. We will have some time to collaborate later in uh, breakout rooms where you'll be able to talk with uh, fellow teachers and share ideas uh, with teachers around the state. So I have a, an agenda that I want us to follow. And I also have two colleagues from the State Department here with me, Sam Eisman and Deb Wade, and they'll be acting as co-hosts for this meeting. I think they'll be able to help me um, admit people to this meeting and provide me some feedback on uh, what's going on in the chat box. So you all have been muted because uh, that's kind of a best practice for a class this size. We're approaching 300 people. And so um, you're muted now when you're in the breakout rooms later, you'll be able to talk with everyone. So thank you for using the chat box uh, for uh, any questions you might have and for introducing yourself. So uh, let me just hop over to the agenda and we will get started. And I guess for a better Zoom meeting, I'm going to share my screen with you all. So here's our um, agenda for the day. I want to welcome you all and uh, thank you for being here. And this is um, uncharted territory for uh, for Oklahoma, for our nation, and I just want to thank you for being flexible and being willing to uh, talk with each other about ideas of how to best meet the needs of our students during this time. One important document that I want you to be aware of is the Frequently Asked Questions for Oklahoma Public Schools. This document is on the State Department's website and it was updated just yesterday and it covers all of these uh, different topics. I'm trying to admit more people to the meeting real quick. Um, so there's information about the coronavirus, mandatory cessation of operations through April 5th, mandatory closure of school buildings for the 2019-20 uh, school year, which was voted upon uh, earlier this week at the state school board meeting information about school boards, workplace campus, school calendars and instruction, assessments and school accountability, funding, distance learning, grading and graduation requirements, which for those of you who completed the survey, a lot of you did have questions about uh, grading. So there's information about that there. For teacher certification, students with disabilities, child nutrition, and federal guidelines for student privacy. The link to that document, I will share that with you later. Um, I think it's about 15, 16 pages. Um, and within that document, under assessments and school accountability, there is updated information for you eighth grade teachers who are wondering, what does this mean for students who used to have to pass the eighth grade uh, reading portion of that ELA test in order to uh, be able to get their driver's permit. So the new guidance is listed here and that's within that FAQ. So I wanted to point uh, that out to you all. Give me one moment to admit more people to the meeting. Jason, I will work on admitting people as they come in. Thank you, Sam. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was being taken care of. So moving on, um, because I want us to have as much time as we can to dig into some resources I'll be sharing with you all. The district uh, that you're teaching in ultimately is going to have to form a plan for distance learning. And those components for your district include the content topics and or standards that you'll be teaching for the remainder of the school year, the amount of learning time uh, each day that is expected for our subject of English language arts. Um, it might be um, less than what you're typically used to uh, as far as in-person versus distance. 
and it may not even be um, all five days of the week, but that's a local control issue um, that your district will figure out. Uh, they will be the ones directing you, suggesting to you, um, advising you, requiring of you uh, the curriculum, the lessons, the activities uh, expected of your students, um, as well as the delivery methods, whether that is um, through one platform, such as Google Classroom, multiple platforms. We know we have students who uh, have limited or no internet access, so we need to meet the needs of all of our students during this time. So your districts will form a plan to help you with that. Uh, they'll also set the expectations for grading. And again, this is a, Oklahoma is a local control state, so it's your district that will be providing ultimately um, the guidance there. So you all were fabulous in taking that poll um, uh, as to what your plans already were, what you were thinking you would be able to do for your students during this time, uh, the resources, the technology, uh, the plans you have, and also a lot of thoughtful questions. In reviewing those comments, uh, it was very clear to me that you all care about your students and um, here we are. Okay, my face is back on the screen. That you care about your students and that uh, you want what's best for them. You still want them to learn. You want their uh, academic needs met, but you also want their uh, social and emotional needs uh, met. This is um, a difficult time for all of us. We want to be with our students. The end of the year uh, celebrations um, have been taken away from us, and that's just really hard on our students, but also on us. So one thing I want to stress now before I forget is that uh, you will have to engage in self-care um, throughout this time. I have been working from home for two weeks now, and it's just very different being away from the office, and I, I know it's going to be so different being away from your students. Um, you're already missing them, and we're all going through different stages of, of grief or of uh, processing all of this, and your students are too. Um, so just be kind to yourself, be kind to others, give yourself grace, um, be patient as the plans unfold, as you try to navigate technology. I feel fairly skilled with technology, but I already had a flub uh, this morning if you were in on this call early. Um, so my apologies for that, and I just have to move move on past that. All right, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen so we can get back to the task at hand. Um, let's see. So, oh, I know what I was going to do. At this time, I'm going to give you all the option to vote in a poll, and what that means is um, it'll just pop up on the screen, and you'll be able to vote yes or no. What I'm curious to know right now how many of you already know what your district's plan is for distance learning and how many of you do not? So let me launch that poll now and you should be able to vote on your screen. Whoa, I'm able to see the results live. You are too, I guess, since I'm sharing the screen with you. So it looks like overwhelmingly you all do not know what your district's plan is for distance learning. Now. We're not starting back with students until April 6th. They have all next week to uh, finalize those details. And so that's okay that you don't know right now, but it is um, perhaps a source of uh, a little bit of anxiety that you're wondering, well, what is the plan and what can we do? What should we do? And hopefully um, some of the things that we talk about and share with each other today and information I share with you uh, will assuage. Uh, some of your fears, concerns, and uh, we'll be able to um, perhaps rest a little bit better tonight. So 81% of you have voted, 243 of the 297 participants. And you see here on the screen that 31% of you do know. So one third of you um, know your district's plan for distance learning but two thirds of you do not. So hopefully that information will be coming in soon um, from your district so that you're uh, better equipped to uh, be prepared to teach your students uh, 
in this new method. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll, but I don't want to lose this data. So I'm going to screenshot it. And the poll is done. I guess I can share the results. Jason, some people said that they couldn't see the poll, that they could still just see the agenda. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we will have to move on. Oh, it looks like there's a drawing on this. Okay, so uh, Deb, thank you for sharing that. I wish they could have voted. I, I don't know how to meet that need right now. So we wanna talk about now um, uh, about distance learning. Uh, which is what we'll be embarking on April 6th. And one definition for distance learning is that distance learning aims to provide a continuous learning opportunity for students from April 6th through the end of the school year that may or may not include the use of technology. So whenever we uh, perhaps first heard about distance learning, we thought, well, I've got to use the internet to uh, teach my students, but that is not uh, the case necessarily, but it is a way to make connections with students um, and to uh, communicate to them, whether it's through email, uh, Google Classroom. Uh, there are precautions you can take uh, according to the Frequently Asked Questions document. If uh, we need to uh, send uh, assignments home uh, physically and what it kind of boils down to and what guidance we've received in our office is that at this time it may be best and this is not a requirement i don't want to um, lead you astray um, but our thinking is that this time it may be best to uh, reinforce and review the skills that our students already have uh, for the remainder of the year now your school district may be doing something different and that is perfectly fine uh, but our thought is that students could practice and hone their literacy, their literacy skills, their reading and writing skills that they already have now. One of the questions that a teacher asked in the survey was, is it okay to just let kids read and write? And I love that question. And my answer to that would be absolutely. If we can find uh, ways to get our students to keep our students reading and writing for the remainder of their school year, their their distance learning school year, then that's going to serve uh, our kids in an academic way, but I think also an emotional way uh, because they need time to process what is happening. And if they're able to write about what's going on in the world right now and uh, think about the things that are different, the things that they're missing out on, the things that um, have impacted them. If they can write about that, I think that's going to help them process um, their emotions and get through this, and they'll be stronger and better for it. And then they'll have a record of this to look back on, because this is a, a unprecedented time in our nation's history. And what better way than English language arts to allow our students to work through some of those feelings. And then if they don't want to do that, but they'd rather write about a review of a, a new musical artist or band um, that they're listening to all the time on Spotify anyway at home or write about um, the Animal Crossing video game that recently dropped for Nintendo Switch, um, we can give them that freedom to read and write about those things that are important to them that they're already doing anyway while they're um, quarantined at home. So uh, to that teacher, and I remember the name, I remember the city that this teacher is from, um, I won't embarrass that teacher, or give them a shout out uh, right now, but uh, thank you for asking that question because um, I feel like you're right on target. If you can find ways, whether it's virtually, um, or through paper packets or through an email or through Google Classroom to give students ideas uh, as to how they could read and write um, throughout this time, they're going to be better for it. So this time is uh, a time for standard eight independent reading and writing to really shine. So I'm going to share my screen again and we'll go back to 
the agenda. So I want to talk about um, two different examples that I've been thinking about that you could perhaps use with your students. And these might work for uh, both middle school and high school, or you might think that would be more middle school or that might be more high school. So a tech example might be to encourage students when they have time, when they have access, to watch some spoken word poetry on YouTube and then to write a spoken word poem of their own. Now you could scaffold this and you could share with students specific spoken word poems that you want them to watch, or you could let them go down the YouTube rabbit hole and just choose which poems they want to watch in order to inspire them to write one of their own. And you could push this even further if students had the internet capability to then record themselves and then share that video on some sort of online platform like Flipgrid. And then a non-tech example would simply be to encourage students to read a text of their own choosing, a book, a magazine, comic book, anything for at least 30 minutes um, as part of their ELA um, learning and engagement. So those were just two ideas that I had. So beyond that, I have developed uh, with the help of my colleagues here at the State Department, a secondary ELA guidance document. So what I wanna do now is share that document with you. We're gonna look at it together and then I'm gonna break you all out into virtual breakout rooms so that you can talk about what your thoughts are so far about uh, our meeting, but specifically to talk about what that document brings to mind and what ideas you have. So let's look at the document together and then we'll uh, go into breakout rooms. So let me pull up the document. I need this menu to go away so I can click on my hyperlink. All right. So the English Language Arts Distance Learning 6 through 12 uh, document is right here on the screen. Hopefully everyone can see it. And a digital version of this document can be found at that website. And we'll come back to that later. I'm also going to share with you the uh, URL for this document. So the document begins with a number of questions to consider while you are planning for distance learning. So you and your colleagues, your department, uh, your school could use this to help uh, guide your thinking as you're considering your plans for distance learning and ELA. So the first question would be, what are reasonable goals for student learning in your context and what experiences should be prioritized? And you will receive district and school guidance and directives, including expectations for learning time at home. For secondary ELA, that might be anywhere from 40 to 60 minutes, four times a week. And you'll also want to consider your students' access to technology, internet, and phones, um, and also students and your responsibilities to family and work outside of school. Many of you have, have children at home, so how will you juggle and, and manage everything? And then you also need to consider your students' current understandings, literacy skills, and background knowledge. I have a friend uh, who is in the middle of teaching Julius Caesar right before spring break, and I haven't talked with her yet to find out what she's going to do uh, now that distance learning is in place. Will they continue the play, or do they need to shift gears uh, to something else uh, now that students won't be with her in person on a daily basis? You all have to make hundreds of choices every day whenever you're in the classroom, and um, you're gonna have just as many choices, if not more, to make now that we're moving to this distance learning plan. Another question I'd like you to consider is, in what ways can students have voice and choice over the text they read and the pieces that they write? You could uh, give them choices of text to read as far as fiction, poetry, drama, and nonfiction. You could let them choose their genre of text, perhaps, and their choice of mode in writing, narrative, informative, opinion, argument, or a combination thereof. And then a choice of whether they get to use multimodal content, alphabetic text, visual, aural, spatial, and gestural text. And then 
a, another question to think about is how will students be introduced to the literary or informational text or writing task? So that might be a video you make, a video you find uh, on YouTube of an author or someone else, or perhaps a posting in a class flip grid. It might also be a mentor text, um, a poem, or a current event. So there are still going to be ways that you can engage your students um, through distance learning. Uh, fourth, in what ways can students be prompted to have productive discussions with their peers or family members um, or you about what they're reading and writing? So there are some ideas listed for you here that they could summarize what they've read and then ask uh, for a follow-up response or question. They could read their piece of writing aloud to someone and ask for feedback. Again, that could be on Flipgrid. Uh, they could FaceTime another classmate or use social media like Instagram or Facebook uh, to communicate with one another. And you might have some sort of dashboard discussion like this right here, like Zoom um, or Google Classroom, some other feature. Uh, fifth, in what ways can students document their thinking and progress? If they have their notebook at home or have access to paper and they want to write down what titles they've read, um, the titles they want to read, their different thoughts and responses, reviews of the books uh, and other pieces that they've read, they could do that. And any questions they have about what they've read. And then they could also keep a writer's notebook with journal entries and prompts and topic ideas, drafts, and sketches. And then they can just take a picture of that and send it to you. Uh, not everything has to be uh, digitally uh, typed or written down if they have legible handwriting. In my 13 years in the classroom, there was only one student whose handwriting was so atrocious, he had to type everything for me. But I was able to decipher what everyone else had written. And that would really lift a load off some students if they weren't having to type everything. I know that's a preference though for some students. So you'll have to kind of navigate those waters and decide do I want to require all students to type things to submit or am I comfortable okay with some of them just uploading um, handwritten uh, notebook entries uh, to show that they're still engaging in the reading and writing process. And so that's what that sixth question here is about that students can use uh, email or a blog platform or Flipgrid or Google Classroom, um, a shared slideshow or photograph of their notebook entries to share the ways that they are still engaging in literacy while we are distance learning. You can follow up with feedback uh, via email, comments on a shared Google document or on a discussion board um, or a phone call. I know some of you are not comfortable um, sharing your phone number with students. I totally get that, but there are other platforms uh, we can use to communicate with students that aren't our personal uh, phone numbers. And then you might also consider collaborating with other teachers during this time. Social studies and science teachers might have some literacy-based learning activities that relate to reading and writing, and that might be a way for you to partner with them so that students aren't as overwhelmed um, trying to do all this work for all their subjects away from you without that support that they would typically get in person. And then fellow ELA teachers, like those of us here on this Zoom call today, might be interested in working together on some sort of online platform or buddy system from afar. Now, one thing that a lot of you had concerns and questions about in the survey was the guidance needed for special education and English language learners instruction. So I have links provided here for special education and English language learners. Uh, that you can consider while you're designing your plans. And then also you might consider universal design to make sure that all activities are accessible for all learners. And there's a link there for you to learn more about uh, universal design for learning. So some of those example activities that I mentioned from before are listed here now uh, for ideas for distance learning uh, for ELA. And I have them divided into middle school and high school. But again, you might think, well, even though I'm a high school teacher, I like that middle school activity for my students and vice versa. So a few more ideas here for middle school. You could ask students to listen to two songs by the same band or musical artist and then decide which one you like better and why. And then write a paragraph about your choice, including at least three reasons. 
for high school, you can encourage students to write a review for a movie or TV show or video game or a musical album that they have recently consumed. So this document links to uh, more examples, more middle school and high school example activities, which I have pulled up right here. And so you'll have access to this um, at the end of our meeting. I'll give you the link. So it just fits on one page. I don't have a ton here for you, but it's enough to get us started. So a few more and then we'll get back to the agenda. Um, I do have a few ideas for acknowledging COVID-19 uh, for middle school. You could ask students maybe to research the 2009 flu pandemic, otherwise known as swine flu, and then ask them to compare and contrast the swine flu with the coronavirus by recording facts in a Venn diagram. And the more I think about that one, I wonder if that's something that middle school students uh, could tackle, or maybe if that would be more appropriate for high school. Um, the, the high school task is to read three news articles about COVID-19 and write a summary of your findings. And I think COVID is actually in all caps, so I'm going to fix that right now on the fly. And then down here at the bottom, the tasks that go across, I think, could be used by both middle school and high school very easily. We could ask students to read uh, text of their own choosing. We saw that one from before. Have them create a comic by hand or with a device that captures this moment in time. And it could be personal or it could be uh, more global. So they might need to do research for that. And then this last one, I, I like this idea of having students partner with a classmate and choose a shared literacy activity, such as reading and discussing the same book. And it's not necessarily a book from your curriculum um, or a, a, you know, one of those class novels you had saved up for the last nine weeks. It could be something else. Um, you could have them collaborate in Google Docs and write a story together, um, or you could have them create a podcast together. So those are just some ideas. Let's see, trying to get back to our agenda here. Oh goodness, struggling y'all. Okay, so if you have other ideas for activities at the close of this uh, meeting, uh, I'll give you a link to a survey where you'll be able to submit your ideas for more distance learning activities. And I'd sure appreciate the help if you've got some ideas. Now, as far as practical advice, when something doesn't work, I want you to give yourself permission to move on to the next idea. And if you have multiple courses for which you have to plan, consider assigning similar assignments and structure, and then make adjustments to the topic. So your sixth, seventh, and eighth graders who you're all teaching might all be doing some sort of inquiry assignment, but each grade is maybe exploring a different topic, but it's still the same structure for you. So that makes it a little bit easier for you to manage. So um, that might be helpful for you. So like I talked about earlier, this might be a time to focus more on enrichment activities that reinforce skills and concepts that students have already learned earlier in the school year, rather than feeling that you have to only address new content. And I know some of you typically use the last nine weeks to review and prepare for state tests anyway. So the fourth nine weeks was going to be a bit of review or enrichment already. So you can continue down that path. And then as you continue to support students, Again, like I said before, it is vital to practice self-care and find ways to connect with family, friends, and other teachers. Okay, this next page is a link to instructional resources that a lot of you are already familiar with. There's a definite or there's a description of what you can gain from each of these websites and resources like Common Lit, Read Write Think, um, a writing prompts tumbler with tons of writing prompts. Kelly Gallagher has a coronavirus lesson plan uh, that really asks students to think about this moment in history and read and write about it. Scholastic has some nonfiction articles over various topics, not just the coronavirus, organized for grades six through nine. And then don't forget about the writing contest page that I've developed um, at the State Department. There are still monthly writing challenges contests that students could participate in for some writing. And then Ted Ed has numerous video lessons uh, that you might find helpful uh, teaching your students and sharing with them. And then there is a link for additional resources 
where I can fit even more, um, an unlimited amount of resources that perhaps I learn about later that you all share with me that just didn't fit on this uh, document. What that page looks like is this right here. And you'll see that uh, the additional uh, information on this page includes Newsella, which some of you mentioned in the survey, uh, Kelly Gallagher's article of the week, The Moth, a storytelling podcast now has a weekly storytelling activity for students. And then if you haven't watched Penny Kittle and Kelly Gallagher yet on YouTube, discuss how they are navigating teaching during these times. It's highly uh, enlightening, inspiring, and beneficial. So you can check out their YouTube playlists. I also have a lot of links to practical advice for distance learning with different platforms um, listed for you here for how to uh, chat with students or how students can chat with one another and live communication platforms in addition to Zoom like Skype, Google Hangouts, WebEx, and Teams. So back to our agenda, we just have a little bit more and then I'm going to put you in breakout rooms so you can talk and share your ideas and be brief because this is a lot of lecture and a lot of me talking. So thank you for bearing with me. So I want you to know that you are not alone and we are here to support you here at the State Department and there are tens of thousands of teachers across the state and nation who are in the same boat, uh, collaborating, sharing strategies and resources and trying to figure out what's best for their students and how uh, to best engage them and keep them reading and writing during this time. Uh, most of you are here because you got this information about this meeting through my secondary ELA newsletter, but if you are not a subscriber, you can click this link uh, and subscribe after the meeting is done. And then some of you were able to find out about this meeting because I posted it in the ELA OK Facebook group. And so uh, if you're not a member of that group yet, uh, it's a fabulous uh, group with lots of teachers who are passionate and engaged and share uh, lots of resources. You can also post on Twitter uh, with the hashtags ELAOK and ingchat. And then also you can watch and share videos in our ELAOK Flipgrid group. Uh, this was something I tried out over a year ago and had some people share out, but not a ton. So we have six teachers, uh, myself included, who shared videos. So if you'd like to hop on and practice, um, sharing a Flipgrid video, if that's something you're going to be asking your students to do in the coming weeks, that might be good practice for you. And then also, um, let's fix this. Oh, it's a PDF. Um, so you can join uh, the OSDE staff and ELAOK -OK teachers from around the state for weekly virtual meetings. And our virtual meetings from now on uh, for the next five weeks uh, will be on Fridays from 2 to 3. Now we're not going to meet tomorrow, but starting next Friday from 2 to 3, we'll have a Zoom uh, meeting time to share out ideas. And then I also want to get uh, information from you all today as to what topics in particular might be helpful to hear from me. So this is my email here along with my Twitter. And then Sam Eisman, who's on the call, you heard him talk earlier. He's our ELA uh, specialist in Project Excel. So he's a great resource to reach out to as well. Some of you have worked with Sam in your work with um, Project Excel. So back to the agenda. Um, my plan now is to move you all in, into breakout rooms. Whenever I move you in, you're not going to be able to hear my voice anymore. And you should be able to unmute yourselves and talk and turn your video on. Uh, Sam, do you know if I need to do that for them now before I put them in breakout rooms? Um, we'll be able to unmute all as soon as we put them in. Okay, so but we won't have to go into each individual breakout room to do that? No. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna put you all in a breakout room with five other people. You can introduce yourselves and then talk about everything that we have learned together so far and what ideas you have. So let me um, move you all into breakout rooms. We have someone waiting to join. Okay, Sam, I'm struggling. Let's stop sharing, first of all. That's, yeah, that's a good start. Uh huh. So where do I move them to breakout rooms? Clicky, clicky. That's four per room. Let's see. 
we'll do 50 breakout rooms. Okay, I'll see you all in about 10 minutes. So around 945. Okay, so see you in just a little bit. So everyone should be back from their uh, chats and their breakout rooms. Hopefully that was helpful to talk with other teachers about uh, what they're learning, processing, thinking about during this time. And uh, we just have uh, 12 minutes left together. I thought I would share the link to the agenda, which has links to everything else that we were, uh, that I talked about so far today. The frequently asked questions document, the secondary ELA guidance documents, uh, which is also linked to those uh, different learning menu ideas. So here is that sharing link right now uh, to uh, the document. And we, we have 12 minutes left. I really don't have a whole lot else planned for us. I didn't want us to be uh, totally overwhelmed, um, but I did want to see if you all had ideas for our upcoming future weekly meetings. Those will be an hour uh, from two to three, April 3rd through May 1st. And this will be the Zoom link that we use every single time. And I'll push that out on uh, the newsletter and on Facebook. Um, but I wondered if it would be helpful uh, to get uh, your thoughts on ideas for potential topics uh, for those meetings, or if it would be better to just have a general check-in and give you all uh, time in groups, perhaps um, sorting you all by middle school and by high school. Um, that would take a bit of legwork, but I think I would be able to get you sorted that way. And I just wanted to get your thoughts. So in the chat box, uh, you might list out right now um, what ideas you have for me for those weekly meetings because I wanna best meet your needs. Of course, I can come up with things on my own, um, but I'd like to know what, uh, what your thoughts are. So if it's uh, training or information on how to, how to use Flipgrid, uh, we could do that. Um, so if you could just share out in the chat box at the end of our time together, I will be able to download this chat and you will too uh, by clicking on the three dots in the bottom right hand corner, which pops up a menu. And then you can save the chat as a text file. And then you'll have links to all the uh, websites that were shared, any uh, messages that were helpful. But if you need a, a certain tutorial, uh, then you might list that there in the chat box. And then also, um, I think I might need to design another survey so I can also get um, maybe a wider response on what kind um, of, of trainings or weekly check-in meetings would be helpful for you all. You're going to get more guidance uh, from your districts in the coming uh, weeks. Um, and, and hopefully, in the, within the coming week, uh, you should get some sort of uh, plan and uh, I think that's going to really uh, help you all. So I don't know what else um, to say other than giving you a chance to uh, leave your comments in the chat box. And um, I don't know, it's this awkward end of class time. I've even had a student tell me once, Mr. Stevenson, you know, you're a good teacher, but the end of your lessons, they just kind of trail off. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a bit like that. Jason. Um, yes, yeah, Sam. Um, there are a lot of questions in the chat, both publicly and privately about, is there a way to get these documents outside of here? So will you be posting them in a newsletter and or on the Facebook page? Yes, so I will do a follow-up uh, newsletter uh, with links to all the documents that I shared today. Um, I will link to the frequently asked questions, the secondary ELA guidance document, and the learning menus. And um, were there other things that people wanted to have? And maybe, you know, the, the chat from here could somehow be, I don't know, there are a lot of people saying that there are so many great resources in the chat, so. Okay, so I will make sure to save the chat. So for once again, if you don't have a link to the agenda, I'm, I, ooh, I did that just to my friend Tracy Hunt. So let me 
try to reassure that again to everyone. So I'm posting in the chat right now the link to the agenda, which has the links to everything else. And um, I'm noticing a comment from Rick that the breakout rooms were nice, but a bit too short, perhaps. We have eight more minutes. Um, I had originally planned to give you all two different chances for breakout rooms. That really could be how we wrap up this meeting is for me to um, send you off into a breakout room again, if you want that option. And then you'd be chatting with new people this time, not necessarily the same people as before. And you could use a, the green or red yes or no to show us. Oh yeah, so how do they access their green yes or no if that's what they would like to do? Uh, if you'd like to wrap up the meeting now that you have the link to the agenda. Uh, um, if you hit participants down at the bottom, you should get the option. Yeah, so if everyone will click the participants button at the bottom of the screen, uh, you will have a green yes for another breakout room or a red no for uh, not wanting that. And it looks like uh, the no's are outpacing the yeses. I wish there were a way to take only the yeses and put them in a, a breakout room. So um, unless there are any other questions, Sam, anything else? Deb, anything else? She may have popped onto her. Deb, Deb popped onto her own meeting. Yeah. So I want to thank you all for listening to me talk so much. This is not my typical style. Um, when I was in the classroom, it was trying to get people uh, talking and thinking and reading and writing. But thank you all for being um, patient with me, for listening. And I appreciate you all and what you're doing for students and what you will be doing for students. So if you just want to hang on uh, to the meeting, I can could put you in breakout groups, but it seems like overwhelmingly people are kind of done. And I think uh, most of us, our brains are at capacity. So thank you all for coming today, attending, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next week on Friday from two to three. And if you're not able to make it to that meeting, it will be recorded and then we'll share it out uh, through the newsletter and later on Facebook is the plan. So appreciate you all. We'll just wrap up there. Thank you, Sam, for helping me manage this meeting. Of course. And we'll use our uh, YouTube editing skills to chop off the first 10 or 15 minutes <laughs> before we just broadcast that to everyone. And Sam's getting some shout outs. Good. Thank you all. I think I'm just going to end the meeting. Is that okay to do? Awesome. All right. Bye, everyone.